And uh, so this was 1947 when it was established. And then what happened was in 1969, so, so Professor Sarawai's main interest was to understand the space. And so he tried various experiments to understand. He, that time it was not possible to go into the space with satellite. So he did some rocket experiments. And then later on in 1969, the institute became really big. And then they found, thought that they would need some engineering experts. So that's when ISRO got established. Actually, it was the first PRL, and then ISRO came out of it. And now you know that ISRO is a big organization. So the Physical Research Laboratory, we are some scientists that we do researches. We also try to build pet uh, satellites kind of things along with ISRO. Of course, we always need their help to go into the space if you want. So, and we have several departments. So if you want to do astronomy astrophysics, say for example, I am from the astronomy astrophysics department. We have atomic molecular, space atmospheric research, geosciences, theoretical physics, and Udaipur Solar Observatory. So in Udaipur Solar Observatory, they particularly try to understand the sun. So this is one of their two telescopes. We have one telescope in Mount Abu, which looks at the sky at night. And during daytime, this is the telescope when they look at the sun. And you know, sun is a very typical star. And so it's very important to understand this sun before understanding the night sky. In night sky, you have various kinds of stars. You have galaxies. But the basic building block of the galaxy is a star. And our closest star is the sun. So this is the telescope through which we look at our nearest star during the daytime. It's in between Fateh Sagar Lake in a lake. Generally, solar telescopes are, they are inside a lake. And so this is called the Fateh Sagar Lake is because you have atmospheric turbulences. So what you need is basically, I will tell you if you ask later on, but basically what you need is a cold atmosphere, a relatively cold atmosphere. We are going to build another big telescope of the world, solar telescope, that's in the lake. Pangyong Lake, so close to Pangyong Lake. So this is really close view of this telescope. Now, this is the sun we see every day. So just like normal, through the normal sky. And what you do is, and the, about this sun, we, we know about the sun, and because since the beginning of our civilization, we know about the sun, right? So people started taking sun as a god. This is, so that's why they built temple. So this is a temple close to where I stay, close to Ahmedabad, the physical research. This is called Modera Sun Temple. So last year, I visited this place. This is the sun temple of Konarak. So in India, we have, we worship God, sun is a god. And in Konarak Sun Temple, if you go and see, you'll see sun god. Uh, they have a statue, several statues of the sun. Because since the early history of the civilization, we, since we worship the god, sun, we used to think that the sun may harm us also. Because we used to have rainy season, we have storms and various other things. We thought this is the God who is God's son who is doing it. And so in all around the world, so this was a painting of 1700s or so. So what it is seen here is that the sun is occulted by the moon. And then people started getting worried that the why it is. So astrologer is predicting on the ground and saying that uh, this is what is going to happen. So basically, we have this sun. And so how does this happen? The lunar solar, solar eclipse is that the, when 
moon comes in front. So this is the view you generally see during the total solar eclipse. I've seen it myself, and I've seen that this diamond ring, the bright ring that, that is called, the bright spot that is called diamond ring. And then you see this kind of red tint at the edges. It is because of the atmosphere of the sun. Now, during the sol when, when there is no solar eclipse, you don't see this very nice, beautiful surrounding of the sun. This surrounding of the sun is basically the sun's atmosphere. It's called the solar corona. You don't see it during normal time. If you look towards the sky today, you don't see it because the sun is so bright compared to this. So that's why you don't see it. But if you can block the disk somehow, and when during the time of the eclipse, we actually can block the sun completely, and so comparative brightness of the atmosphere is visible. That's why you see the atmosphere. Why I'm talking about this so much is because we are going to talk about this atmosphere when we speak about the Aditya one. So where the sun is, this is our own galaxy. Okay? And in this galaxy, how the sun is located? You see, sun is located at two-third distance from the galactic center. So you will see that the, this is the point on this, and where you will see that the sun is located, and it will be marked there soon, so this is where the sun is, and the galactic center you can locate probably. And this is 30,000 light years away from our galactic center. So that means to, for the light to come from the galactic center, to our solar system, it takes 30,000 years. So now you know where in our whole galaxy, we see this galaxy in the sky, in the dark sky if you go, you see there are several stars on a band. So this is our own galaxy, Milky Way galaxy we call. And we are such part of it, we are sitting there. And so now coming to Aditya L1 mission, so you might have been Noticing here the L1, so okay. So this is a point between the sun and the earth, and it's very close to earth, though its distance from earth is 1.5 million kilometers, whereas distance from sun to earth is 150 million kilometers. So you can understand that the, this is L1 is very nearby, whereas sun is very, very far away, 100 times far away than the L1 point. I'll give you a better understanding about this L1 point, how is it. So, think about this. So, you have the sun there, you have earth there. Forget that there is a surface, just imagine this is an imaginary surface, okay? So, this is the surface that says the more bent it has, the particle will go towards that direction, okay? Now, if I leave a satellite close to the sun, what will happen? It will, so you will see that here. So it will fall down towards the sun. So this particle, it will move towards the sun, okay? Now, if I have another particle, that will move towards earth, so if it is nearby. If it is little bit away, then it, it slides down the, this hill, okay? But if I adjust some place, these are the points in between where I can place this particle, then this particle, these green points, though they are, this part, or spacecraft, these spacecrafts will remain there. They won't move. They are either move towards left or nor move towards right. Okay, so these are called, actually these are discovered by Euler and Lagrange. 
but we call these all these points Lagrange points. Okay, and L1 point, so we have L1 point in between Earth and the Sun, and we have the other side that is called L2 point. So if I want to look towards the Sun, I go to L1 point. If I want to look towards the dark sky, I move to L2 point. So there is a L2 point, you cannot, this is unable to resolve. So this is the L1 point here, and this is the L2 point here. So you might have heard about JWST, James Wave Telescope. So that is looking towards the deep sky, that is night sky, then you go to L2, other side. So L1 point, now putting something into L1 point is not so easy for us and we want to make it cheaper. So what we do is that, so this is where the L1 point, so this is again, this is the sun and this is earth and this is the L1 point and this is L2 point. And in the L1 point, things are okay, it's balanced, the force that is pulling the satellite is towards earth and it is pulling towards the sun and the force is exactly balanced there. So even though it is balanced, it is still not balanced. So it or orbits there. And some time to time, it tries to move towards sun or towards earth. So we need to put a rocket there to push it back again to the place into the orbit. So that's where the L1 orbit, it follows a, an orbit which is called halo orbit. Okay. Now, to send something to the halo orbit, what we need to do is, we need to push it from the earth, make it one circle to earth, increase the circle, increase the circle, then shoot again, and now it is going to, so now actually, at present, Aditya is here. So it's actually, now I'll show you data. So we have started receiving data. I'll show you how it looks like. And so it moves, so this is called the halo orbit. So what you are seeing here, this is the orbit around the L1 point. So L1, what we learn about L1 point, L1 point is not that far away from Earth. It's much away from the sun. And it is a halo orbit there, close to the Earth. Now, of course, this is the spacecraft. And this is the spacecraft when uh, it was inside the final, during the final stage. So what you need to do, once you made the space, once on, the, on a single spacecraft, you have several satellites, several instruments, sorry. So these instruments are mounted onto this spacecraft. And this space, uh, uh, spacecraft will be eventually mounted onto the rocket and that will be pushed into the orbit. So before that, you need to, so I build an instrument in my lab. You build another instrument in your lab. So all these instruments are built in different parts of the country. So we bring them together to Bangalore and this is a picture from Bangalore. And then they, we combine them together, and then we shake them, we do various experiments on it to see that the, those are staying there. Because in the space when you go, you have different kind of atmosphere. You have rocket with it. So you, it will go through the vibrations, strong vibrations. So those things need to be checked. So sun is really huge compared to the other planets, of course. And to the air, so but I need to little bit talk about the sun. So sun, sun is hot, right? So it generates its energy at the core through nuclear reaction. And that energy goes up to the surface, okay? So in between here, around this point, is called, so first initially this part is called the core and then further you go up, it is called the radiation zone because the heat gets radiated in this region. Further you go up, it is called the convection zone. I'll show you what is it. So actually when you boil water, you know you see convection. So this is the convection you see here. 
and beyond the convection zone you have the surface of the sun so this is the surface actually you see every day you may not be able to see it in detail but if you look at the sky or towards the sun then you see this is the surface above the surface i told you at the beginning it is the atmosphere of the sun that is the corona and the point is so you have a heat source close to the sun so you have fire somewhere further you go away your temperature falls down so you feel less heat so this happens so temperature here is very high more than 10 million degree kelvin 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 7 okay now further you go up temperature falls down falls down falls down and here the temperature is at the surface that we see every day that is 6000 degree kelvin or celsius 6000 6 into 10 to the power 3 but the, there is a problem after the surface the temperature suddenly goes up and it again further goes up to 10 to the power 6 we still don't understand the source is here and there is no source apparently to us up beyond the surface but why the temperature goes up suppose i have heat source somewhere fire somewhere the temperature is to my natural understanding it is called the second law of thermodynamics further we go out we see the temperature to fall, fall down but i don't see up to this point the temperature falls down and suddenly i see the temperature is rising up okay so this is still a mystery and it is hap it happens in the atmosphere of the sun this is called the solar corona and the temperature there is the million degree kelvin and so how the corona is heating up that problem is known as coronal heating problem and that's why we try to understand i mean physics wise this is a main reason that one of the main reasons that why the corona is becoming so hot so i told you at the so this is a cut through the sun okay so i told you that the core energy is getting generated here and that the heat passes through now if you remember that the in the kitchen kettle bottom we put fire if you put water in it you see convection right so the water starts boiling now i have more hot here it's, it's very hot here this is much cooler now i put fluid here okay water or something that sort of so actually in the sun we have fluid there and what we see is something like this so water starts boiling okay so this phenomena is called the convection that's why we see call it the convection zone and this is a very important region because of the reason that this is the region where the magnetic field actually gets generated this is a little bit complicated process once you get into the college you will understand that the how it happens how magnetic field can get generated but in the convection zone of the sun magnetic field actually get generated and those magnetic fields are coming out of the sun that i will tell you but sun is a magnetic star and its magnetic field actually gets generated in the convection zone of the sun and this happens in many other stars so most of the stars are magnetic stars and the magnetic field is getting generated through this kind of convection process now something is happening just at the ground floor suppose something means that convection happens okay or you put your kettle into the kitchen burner and your convection happens how will you see on the, from the top so this is an experiment suppose you have oil put it on the burner and you have a vessel okay what you do you put some iron foils in it okay so this is what you will see because the water starts boiling so if you picture it you will see that these kind of cells are getting formed there okay so these are the cells so i i said now this we see in the kitchen now if i get in case of the sun so i don't every day when i look at the sun 
I don't see that kind of thing, right? But that may also happen in the sun. So for that, I need to look through the telescope. So now what we see here on the sun, some little bit part of the sun, if I look through the telescope, I see this. And this is a moving thing. So you see they are dynamic, they are changing in time. Okay, so these are called granular cells. Okay. So this, this is probably not apparent, so that's why I, sh I, I showed you this picture. In this picture, there are many granular cells. So this is the picture taken through a telescope and the, the whole surface of the sun you can see. Here, of course, this is not the sun you see every day, but what you need to do is that you need to have a solar telescope and if you want to look at the sun through the telescope straight away, be careful. Now, I said the sun or many other stars are magnetic stars. So this is what you see we again with the telescope or if you look at the sun even through some filter then what you see is that there are some spots on the sun. So these spots are very highly magnetic region. Okay. So it is something like uh, a bar magnet which is embedded on the surface of the sun you can say. So there are north poles and south poles. So these are the very highly magnetic region. Whereas here the magnetic fields are really strong, but in these regions the magnetic fields are not that strong. But there are magnetic fields. And sun is a magnetically very dynamic star you can say. So you see these spots, I said magnetically dynamic star. So what, what does that mean? Something is dynamic, right? So I, what I mean is that if you have a spot, so today I see one spot, tomorrow I will see two, day after tomorrow I will see 10 and it keeps on increasing 150, 160. After 11 years what happens, this keeps on falling down again. So again after 11 years it falls down to zero almost. You don't see any sunspots. So this is called the solar activity. Because when there are more sunspots, that means sun is magnetically more active. And if it, if it becomes more active, it becomes very angry, it throws away plasma into the space. So this is what I wanted to show you. So you see that there are sometimes there are many sunspots, sometimes there are very few sunspots. And this actually overall shows you how these sunspots are getting generated in the convection zone. Okay, so the magnetic field is actually getting generated in the convection zone, just, just beneath the surface of the sun. So first time, it was noticed that the, these sunspots, sun have dark spots by Galileo Galilei. So that was the time when telescope was just becoming available so Galileo started looking at the sun with telescope and then he marked. So we didn't have photographic plate. So this was 1609, 1609. We didn't have photography, we didn't have digital camera, we didn't have mobile phones of course. But what he could do is that the, he could take a page, he used to draw circles and on these circles he used to mark those points where on the sun there are sunspots. So this is how he kept on recording. Of course, later on he became blind because he looked at the sun. So he couldn't see at the end. And but he kept on seeing the how the sunspot was changing in time. Now I told you about the surface. So the sunspot actually is a feature on the surface of the sun. I also told you from the surf, on the surface the temperature is 6000 degree Kelvin and this is the point where from the temperature starts rising. So you go up, so this is the height in the atmosphere of the sun, you go up. Okay, to look at that, those regions, what you need to do is, at, to look at different temperature regions, you need to have different glasses. 
okay so those we call filter so if i say for example imagine if you look through the yellow glass you will look through the just the surface now the temperature goes up you look through a green glass and then it looks like this you want to see further up where the temperature is further high you look through red glass it looks like this it's not exactly what i'm saying but it is you have to use different filters to probe different regions and the fact is different region actually looks very different so on the surface you see the sunspot if you go up in height the temperature is rising the sunspot doesn't look exactly the same and when you get into really million degree kelvin temperature then sun looks very different i'll show you how in the million degree kelvin you look at the sun but the thing is now i told you about the filter so yellow filter or 6000 degree kelvin temperature you can see really with yellow and yellow means you know yellow okay so and that you can see through normal telescope or if the see the sun so this is called visible wavelength but once your temperature starts increasing 10000 20000 30000 your wavelength actually changes so you don't see the sun from that sun because those wavelengths are getting absorbed by our ionosphere in the atmosphere by our atmosphere so for that what we need to do we need to get into the space and look at the sun so i told you at the beginning that we have solar atmosphere which is called the corona and the coronal temperature is 10 to the power 6 degree kelvin now 10 to the power 6 degree kelvin temperature sun if i want to see i need to get to the space so that's why it is very important for us to go to space and look at the sun also if i want to see how the surface is changing then i can see from the ground with a telescope now i'll show you how a brilliant spacecraft has gone into the space and has shown the image okay but this is i'll show you a little later this is little later so this is the image of some spacecraft which has gone to the space and looked at the sun it's really dynamic over the many years okay so as i said if you look the yellow image of the sun these regions were looking very different those were sun spots whereas in 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 this image it is this is called the ultraviolet extreme ultraviolet and this is really bright so this is a spacecraft called solar dynamic observatory sent by nasa into the space <coughs> and so these are the bright regions where they throw away many many hot plasma into the space so you see this this structured regions these are the magnetic structures these are followed by hot plasma in it okay so why did jitter because there was a huge flare which came hit the spacecraft so that's why it did jitter at that time so this is the surface of the sun we see through a telescope this is this image can be taken from the ground as well and these are the sun spots so now coming to 
I promised you, I will show you how Aditya L1 has, is going to on the way to L1 point and now it is getting to the L1. So we have opened, started opening our, so you have a cover. So this is, we wanted to image the sun. So what I told you, okay, by the way, I have to tell you that the what region I am taking. So this is the surface. I told you, you can take this image from the ground. Now you go further up, the temperature goes around 6,000 to 10,000 to 20,000, 30,000, and then eventually 10 to the power 6. I have shown you the movies of 10 to the power 6. But this region where 70, 80,000 Kelvin or little less <coughs> is a very, very difficult region to probe, to, to take the picture, and there are very few images of that region. So this is what we targeted. This region is called the chromosphere. Okay, it is between the surface and the corona where the temperature is keep on rising. And this region, we are trying to look through our own satellite. So this is, this was the smaller version of it was released in the press. You might have seen many, many pictures of this. So, but what I'm doing actual picture of this. So what you see here is that the, there are regions of the sunspots. This is the first solar image taken by Indians from the space, okay? <laughs> and this is taken by an instrument called the SUIT instrument, S-U-I-T. The instrument was primarily built by Ayuka, Pune. And what you see now, what I want you to understand is, you see spots onto it, on the surface of the sun. These spots are, you see, the, at different height. What I did was, I am looking through different heights in the image, and I am trying to show how they look at different height at different temperatures. So you understand how different they look like? So the same sun, at the same time, it is taken from different stages. So they look really different. And it is, why do they look different? Because the plasma is differently hot and it has, the sunspots are very highly magnetic region. So this is the image, then further you go up, million degree Kelvin, you see this. Now, I told you about the sun and it's little bit of its closed atmosphere, but its atmosphere is extended. It extended to interplanetary medium where have, we have Mercury, Venus, and we are also there. So what is, so what sun is doing is continuously throwing away some plasma into the space, okay? So these plasma, so as you are seeing here, is continuously throwing away plasma into the space. And this is called the solar wind. Okay, so it's something like a breeze, but it's not so breeze like what we see, but it is the breeze of having speed of 400 to 700 kilometers per second. So there's a continuous breeze or flow of continuous plasma into the space. Now, you must be knowing that the Earth has its own magnetic field. So this magnetic field is more like a dipole bar magnet and that's what we have, and that magnet, because these are like solar, is actually saving us to hit by the sun straight away. So it's continuously throwing away plasma into the space, and this is coming towards us and towards many other planets. Now, to tell you that the, how this wind is flowing, okay? So there's the sun, okay? And now, this, uh, this wind means these are charged particles. Have you heard of electrons and protons? So these are the electrons and protons. These are coming. Okay, how do they come? So they are coming towards us. So they are passing through L1 points. So we thought, in PRL, where from I am, that we thought, since we are going there at L1 point, however, how about measuring these particles? 
okay, we will be sitting there and we'll be feeling the breeze of these particles. Okay. So this is again first particle that we uh, instrument. So this is this was a press release. Probably many people didn't understand what is it, and what actually it is is like energy of proton. So the, and this is the time, and this is the energy of protons. How are they? So it's a little bit difficult to understand. But what we can do is we can actually because you know when the wind passes through you, then you can actually calculate the velocity of the wind and what we have done is we have calculated the velocity and so this is 300 kilometers per second in the space where at L close to L1 point actually at that time it was not it was a little bit far away so it was taken on 28th of November okay so this was now we are getting many more data so this is called the aspects instrument a s p e x aspects instrument so this is i'm really straight away like everyday day to day life how was it getting built so i was involved with it and still involved with it because this data is coming and a very important thing of doing science is you do something and you let people know so you give you get your data you give it to others okay the very good thing is that if you give it to others others also can help you understand better so this is what we do actually when we build a spacecraft and we have to give it away we have to keep it on the internet so that people get it so we are trying to understand what we are getting is coming so you can imagine something is happening at l1 point so those data are sent to us now we have to get that those data we have to make sense out of it right so now i told you you have a constant breeze so this constant breeze onto this constant breeze you have some big bursts and those are again because of the magnetic field of the sun okay so how does it happen so you have this magnetic field and you get flare like this so what you see there is a this magnetic field will go up suddenly and it throws away huge amount of plasma and that comes to us and those plasma those things will come and hit earth atmosphere so that is actually that can harm us in a what way because this is a huge amount of charged particles those are coming towards us these charged particles can affect us through our satellite system if our satellite systems are affected then our banking system mobile phone everything can get affected and these particles also create these are called auroras so you get in polar region you get auroras so this is called the helios another instrument made by isro and what they see i'll make you understand so how so you have light somewhere boom and then you look at so if you try to plot that light you will see sun jump and then it fall down so here you see light but not normal light but in x-ray you go to do x-ray right somebody's arm is broken sun is emitting x-ray after ultraviolet so if it is very hot then it is emitting x-ray so what this instrument is doing that it is measuring how much x-ray is coming from the sun and since it is above the earth's atmosphere it can do it from ground you cannot and what it shows you that the suddenly it is jumping so there is a player that it is it has measured so this is again was released in the newspaper so now if you block the sun i told you what you can do is that the because sun is very bright so you cannot see its atmosphere now i told you that I, it also throws away huge amount of plasma into the space so 
and this flare if you want to see so if you block the sun what you will see is that the, you see the huge amount of plasma which went into the space would look like this okay so this is so uh, once and once it throws away it comes and hits the detector the cameras and then you see this white scratches onto the cameras for the time being so these flares can affect us okay so last year we spacex had lost 40 of its satellite it's because huge plasma which is coming so it's something like storm and we call it solar storm so if solar storm comes it comes hit the spacecraft and move them and they may get lost also so that's why it is very important to understand the sun our closest star and as i said the breeze the solar wind that comes if it comes towards you how does it look like so this is earth's magnetic sphere magnet so but wind is slowly slowly means 400 to 700 kilometers per second and then it comes it hits the earth's magnetic field and then it creates waves and various other things this is how it actually what it, you don't see it it's not what you can through a camera you can do but what you can do is that you can in fact run a computer simulation basically you write an equation you make it put it into the computer and the computer would give this kind of result and when a flare comes it comes through the polar region what you see aurora borealis and this is what you see that the, if you go towards the polar region you see aurora borealis this way so again if we go to the space also we are going for space tourism so if i go to space today i have to be very careful if there is a solar storm coming so i have to predict that the weather sun is going to throw away huge amount of plasma that may affect me so that's why we actually because sun is continuously throwing little bit solar wind so that's why we use the space suit because this is a radiation zone that can affect us we won't be surviving if we don't have this space suit so this is the time again in the laboratory in isro of aditya one and i have talked to you about the suit instrument about this is bit i ayuka uh, uh, i have also told told you about the instrument that measures the solar wind and this is the plus this is also very similar kind of thing that I, that is not yet opened data from it has not started coming out i have told you the x ray light curve this is the helios made by isro and solex is also very similar kind of thing and then we have we can measure the magnetic field at l1 point that is using this magnetometer its data is i have seen myself just some few days ago they have they have not really completely opened it but they have started getting very good data and this is the vlc this data this is camera is not yet opened this is but i i'm going to show you the kind of image it is going to get it is the image kind of image vlc i am expecting to give you so this is that uh, this is a coronagraph because you will be blocking the sun in vlc so you look forward for this image that if you block the sun uh, this is the image aditya l1 will be giving you from its vlc space instrument <laughs> now i told you about the sun right so sun is in its middle age it's a middle aged star so after this what will happen it's burning its hydrogen to helium and this burning one day will be finished after 4.5 billion years and then because there's a balance there 
So the, these balance will be disrupted. So sun will become huge. And then it will probably gobble us. So it will become slowly expanded and it will come towards us. So that time we may have to move to Jupiter or Saturn, maybe. And then eventually it will, then again it will shrink. And it will become like a white, white dwarf, kind of a dwarf star that will remain like this. With that, I'll end this presentation. Thank you very much. They may have questions, huh? Isn't it too... Uh, This. Any questions? Students, please raise your hands and your hands. So, what were the problems you faced when while making Arjita L1? By? While making Aditya L1? There are many problems you, Adit, well, Aditya L1, I showed to you that there are seven payloads on it, seven instruments. So every instrument have its own problem. So, and it's like, it's a, each instrument is quite difficult to make. It's not like an instrument that you, you are making it for home. You want to send it to the space. So you have to make everything space qualified, okay? So that can go into the space and survive. So that's a very important thing. Next is today you need some very smooth surface, say for example, you are trying to build that very smooth surface. You may find that the smooth surface is not that smooth. Then you have to throw it away. Again, you have to make it. So there are various, in, if you do a measurement science, you, I mean, if you do an experiment, you have to go through very strict, rigorous constraints that were this, this, this. If you make all these things satisfied, then only you can get this thing done. You can look the sun, the picture, real picture of the sun. That is like a telescope, okay, right in the space. So it has many filters in front. So those filters, some of them you have to order from outside, somebody, some company will provide you something. So everything, all combinations and everything can make one instrument. Like that you have seven instruments together. And then all of them you have to mount them onto the spacecraft and then you have to send it. So it's all, it's, it's full of difficulties. Very, ah, very good, uh, very important questions. What are the conditions you need to check? This is what you were asking? Yes, sir. So, first of all, your spacecraft has to be visible from Earth, right? Yes. So, something, you, you collect data and then you relay that data to Earth. So, you have a dish antenna or the Earth. So that dish antenna will receive the data. So you have to see that spacecraft first condition. So how can we do it 24 hours? We cannot because we can see the spacecraft once in a day or twice in a day because it is, if it, L1 point is like, whenever we are looking at the sun, we can perhaps see it because it is in between Earth and sun. We can see that 
spacecraft. Even though with your normal eye you cannot, probably if you look through the uh, telescope, then you can probably see it. Now, during night, I am not seeing at the sun. Yes. So I am on the opposite side, so somebody else have to give it. So you need to have a collaboration with other countries to get the relay. Okay. So then you receive on the other side and then other side it will be received and then they can transfer it to you. That's not a problem. Yes. So this is uh, an issue. Thank you, sir. Sir, just now you talk about the mystery. You told that for the corona that uh, means the topmost layer, the temperature suddenly from 10 degree, 10 with the power of 3 transfers to 10 with, 10 with the power of 6. Sir, so I have a theory related to it. Can you just tell me, is it right on, means just, sir, I think, sir, just you tell that uh, there are some many nuclear reactions that hydrogen converts into helium. So whenever there is a reaction, it it releases some of the, some parts of the energy too. So I think that there are millions of reactions at the time of in the sun. So the energy would be also be released at a large amount. That's why I think so that the, temperature of the corona increases. That's fantastic. What you think is exactly what is happening. <laughs> this is happening at the core of the sun. Because hydrogen is getting converted to helium at the core of the sun. So it's, you are absolutely right that the, this is how many, many reactions are happening and that is releasing energy, right? So this heat energy is now coming to the towards the sun, sun surface. But on the surface of the sun, you have you are your hydrogen is finished. Okay. So or, or very little bit of hydrogen which can get converted to helium. So there's and hydrogen to get converted to helium, what you need is tremendous amount of pressure. Mm. I'll tell you the what we kind of understand is that of course it is actually the source what you said okay so it is the energy which is coming from inside the sun to the atmosphere okay but the question is who is carrying it it is the sun's magnetic field yes. that is carrying this energy into the atmosphere okay, okay. okay sir thank, thank you. you sir Sir what, sir, what is the best language point to study and observe the sun? Best, uh, I would say you jump onto the sun, that's the best thing. So, and we have a uh, Parker solar probe that is going close, very close to the sun. But there, there's a disadvantage. If you go very close to the sun, we still don't have such high technology. Human being don't have they have not invented anything yet that you can straight away look at the sun from so close because it's so hot and so bright that the, our detectors, cameras will get burned. So what we need with the Parker solar probe, we need to block the sun and see the surrounding. So that way you can, you can actually go very close to the sun, say for Venus orbit and look at the sun. and yeah, so based, that way there is nothing called based because what we need to know is that the, we need to understand the sun from three dimension. We want to see the sun, how it is from the top. We want to see how it is at the equator, how it is very nearby. So all these points, so L1 is one of the advantage, uh, one of the points where from we want to observe the sun. but. Another thing is that we want to also do a regular weather prediction. So you know, for doing a weather prediction, you have weather centers. So where you can ask me a question, where I want to make my weather centers in the space, then I'll say that the L1 point and there's a another side, L5, a, uh, left side of L1 point, where from sun is rotating. So at these L points are also important, except the L2, because L2 is the other side. Thank you, sir. Sir, on what basis we predict the consequences in the space, and is it always true? What basis? We predict the consequences in the space. 
Uh, like I just said, that uh, if you look towards the sun 24-7, then you know when sun is throwing away huge amount of plasma, and in which direction. So you remember that you have studied, you have two eyes. Because of you have two eyes, so you see things in three dimension. So now, if I have one camera here in the space, another camera here in the space, I can see the sun in three dimension. So if sun throws away anything towards me, then I can understand that the weather it is coming towards me or towards my neighbor. So th from that, I can understand the weather with hot plasma is coming towards me and affect my, is affecting my spacecraft. So this is how we try to understand or we want to predict the space weather. So we want to see, with actually predicting space weather means we want to predict whether there is a sudden increase of electrons and protons coming from the sun. Because these electrons and protons are going to affect our satellite communication system and the spacecraft, uh, small satellites. They can, they can, any? Uh, they get struck by the magnetic field of the earth. So, uh, they did not affect any kind of, like, uh, atmosphere, etc., something like no, that. No, no, no. A very good question. Probably I couldn't clear you many things. Or uh, the thing is, I told you, sun is throwing away particles, okay? So, first thing, sun is throwing, sun is also giving you radi, I mean, like, elect, so there are two kinds of things sun is giving us. One is proton, electrons, these are plasmas. So those are coming towards us. Another is light. Sunlight, that is also coming towards us. If the sunlight, you have white light, you have ultraviolet light, you have X-ray lights, everything is called light, okay? So now these particles which are coming towards us, those can be obstructed by Earth's magnetic field. So our own magnetic field is shielding us from these charged particles, electrons and protons, okay? But it is not shielding us from the light which is coming towards us. Okay, still wrong, I am. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the magnetic field is not shielding us from the light, okay? Now we have atmosphere of Earth. So this atmosphere is actually shielding these lights which is coming. So X-ray, why we are not, we are, if we would have X-ray straight away coming towards us, we would get burned. So that is not, but we would get various diseases. So we are not getting it, why? It's because we are, we have ionosphere above. So this ionosphere is filtering this light. So again, summary is, we have magnetosphere, Earth's magnetic field, that is shielding us from the charged particles. Our own atmosphere, ionosphere, that is shielding us from X-rays, ultraviolet, and things like that. Is it clear now? Thank you. Uh, sir, if there is so much power in the solar flare, sir, so how do you protect Aditya L1 from those solar flares? Very good question. Sir. <laughs> It may actually, <laughs> what you asked is, we cannot protect if the solar flare comes towards us. Uh, in fact, what happened, I will tell you, long time ago, in 1995, there was a spacecraft called SOHO, which was at L1 point. And after the solar flare, it dragged away so much that they lost it for several days. And then finally, they found some from somewhere the hint of it, and then they got recovered. And so he is still, still, still giving some of the, its instruments are still uh, working. It's a, it's a great instrument that solar physics community have got so far. But Aditya L1, as you correctly said, very correctly said, if something comes towards us, we cannot save ourselves. So if it comes, it will really drag us 
uh, drag, drag the other tail one, and <laughs> we don't know what will happen. It's a very important question. I'll remember it, and I'll tell others. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and sir, one more question. Sir, what does ISRO have after Aditya L1? Ah, this is also again very another question. So you have to decide, in fact, because I probably I won't carry on my science so much, so many years. But I mean, just last month we went to Nainital. We have an uh, only few of us got together to see what is the so future of Aditya L1. Okay. So now we were discussing that the, what are the kind of instruments we can build that can actually help the world to understand the sun. So we are still thinking. So now you are growing. So you will be part of it eventually, I hope. And you are welcome to join our community. Thank you, sir. Sir, the planets between the Earth and Sun, does they affect the Lagrange point? Uh, planets, uh, you, you may have, in every individual planet, you may have one Lagrange point. They are Lagrange points. So Lagrange point is a basically Euler and Lagrange found, and this is through the calculation. How can you calculate if you have one planet and the Sun, so there are two heavy bodies and a spacecraft, which is much, much lighter than these two heavy bodies. Then you can find, calculate what are the stable points in between. So every planet have their own Lagrange point. So our Lagrange point is our own Lagrange point. And it cannot be affected by any other planet unless and until some other planet by any chance comes towards us, then this, this Lagrange point will be your calculation, because it's actually a point where the forces are balanced. So when the force pull from the sun and pull from earth, both are equal. Now if there's a nearby planet, then what will happen? That will also pull the spacecraft. So it may try to balance, then you have to do a vector pulling to get it balanced. Okay? Thank you, sir. Sir, which types of instruments stored in Aditya L1 to help it to study the uh, corona layer of sun? Corona layer of the sun. So, yes, the very last one I told you, Professor you are now, then he said, okay, if you want to go and see the sun, why don't you go to L1 point? Just don't go to a nearby orbit, you go to the L1 point. And then it was moved to L1 point, or after happening all these things, then I, I came back to India and got into it. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, what is the result of the Aditya? Aditya means what? <laughs> that answers the question, right? So, what was the budget of Aditya L1? Total budget, this is, uh, it's not at the top of my head. I, I am not remembering it. Very difficult question. <laughs> yeah. I cannot tell you, I'm sorry. Okay, sir. Damage means through spacecraft, uh, through solar wind, or through through flares. The thing is, we have now geostationary satellites, and we have cameras. We have help. We we ca I, I expect that we will help from the various other space agencies, ESA, NASA, JAXA. So they are nowadays after other tail one after Chandra and three. So we have now good friendship with them. So they may help us with it because they they have many space satellites which are looking towards the sky and uh, so they may help us that out because now it is not like 1995 when there were very few spacecrafts which were not uh, looking at the sky now there are plenty 
And I hope if something <laughs> hopefully not happens, or that happened, I hope it, it would not be that difficult. Sir, what is benefit of taking photos by different colors of lenses of planet? Different colors of? Planet, like there are uh, several colors of lenses. Luminescence. Yes, sir, like you have shown that picture that there is many types of images of sun in different colors. Ah, okay. Yes. Yes, sir, yes, this. Ah. So what is the benefit? Yes, sir. What is the benefit of taking these photos in different colors? Very good. You see how the sun looks like? This is called the surface of the sun here. Right? Now, this is very different than this image, right? So every image, so the benefit first is, I told you, the surface, the temperature is 6,000. Above it is million degree. Within 5,000, kilometers. Now I want to probe this, how is the region in between? So you have to take different image. So you take, so say for example, uh, uh, you take the image of the surface and then you take little bit above image, little above image. So you see how they are changing at different, how they look like a different height. Now if I understand how they look like a different height, I can also say how are they connected. So how are they connected means they are actually, I know, that they are connected through magnetic fields. And then they are also giving some amount of radiation. They are how much hot. So all these things they have to, you have to connect together to find out what is the reason of the, why they are million degree Kelvin there and why 6000 degree Kelvin there. So this is the main reason that you want to see the what is happening at every layer. Then only you understand that the how the temperature is jumping, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, how many countries sends their own uh, solar probe to sun? Uh, ESA, NASA, JAXA, and Chinese Space Agency, and India. Okay. That was very good thing. <laughs> solar energy. Ah, uh, if if Earth's magnetic field. So your question is, if Earth's magnetic field cannot stop the solar, uh, solar uh, energetic particles or electrons and protons coming from. If Earth would not have its magnetic field, what would have happened? So to straight out, we would not be born at all. What would have happened is that the whole plasma, these electrons and protons, they would come and they would drag, they, they would hit the surface, okay? So they would hit the surface means uh, across this region. And we have seen in our data that we have crossed this region. It's very exciting to look at that data. Uh, sir, like what thing inspired you to choose this field of science or to become a scientist? You like mathematics, physics? That's why. I always like mathematics, physics. I especially liked physics always. I still like physics. Yes. I like computers. Yes. Thank you. Is 
I, th I, I think um, I'm not an expert in that, that, that particular field. <laughs> I shouldn't comment in it. <laughs> yeah. Sir, what are the things which makes uh, Aditya L1 different from any other solar probe? You saw either the image of the sun that in that particular region, now we have fairly good understanding about the sun. Okay? So now we have to find out what are the things we exactly don't know. We have many things unknown in the atmosphere means in interplanetary space, many things, and especially plasma physics is unknown. There, it's not at all clear. Unless, so I said that the data we are collecting, the velocity, so there's further more complications of physics in it. So that part is not at all understood. So we have now instrument to observe this part, the image of the sun, the first, the image I showed you, the first image from of the sun from the space. Yes, so that image, that kind of image from that particular layer of the sun was not taken before by anybody in the world. Okay, once a German space, German satellite had just gone, uh, actually rocket experiment, it just gone and checked the image and came back. It was not a continuous observation of that part. So we, we have sent this now, ima this, these images have started coming. So this is for the first time basically. So these are, so if B and C works, the, the instrument image that we have not seen yet, so a coronagraph we call it, and if we go, the, and if it works perfectly, then that would be a great achievement basically. We are keeping our finger crossed that uh, the how it will be working, but let's see. Thank you, sir. So, how many missions you have been working for? <laughs> this is the second one. Chandrayaan 2 was the first one. So, we have a... <laughs> so, again, I worked in the scientific part of it. So, Chandrayaan 2 has a orbiter, okay? And this orbiter, you remember there was a one thing crash landed onto the moon, and but there was an orbiter which went into the orbit. Okay, and now our in, in institute, don't call me me, I mean it is like our institute. <laughs> this, our, uh, have, a, have an orbit, have an, uh, we have an instrument in Chandran orbiter that is called solar X-ray monitor, XSM it is called. So what it does, it looks at the sun, and it looks at the sun and in X-ray, and it tries to measure the, the, how the X-ray behavior of the sun. And what we have done was, I told you the sun has magnetic activity. So 2019, sun was really magnetically low. So we looked through the sun during when it was magnetically low, and we have seen its X-ray behavior with it. And it is really, uh, it's a very successful instrument made by my colleagues, very close colleagues with whom I work. Uh, it's a wonderful instrument and it has got really good science out of it. Probably you don't, because what will happen is that once science results will co start coming out, once it reaches to L1, everybody forgets. But the science result is very important thing. So after Chandrayaan 2, you might have forgotten everything about the Chandrayaan 2, but this XSM was one of the most, not one of the, this is the most successful instrument of Chandrayaan 2, scientifically. So every instrument is sent into the space, 
to achieve some science goal. And those, once the science results come out, it's so complicated that newspapers don't find it interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I have a close association with this Chandrayaan 2 XSM. Thank you, sir. Sir, how much is the lifeline of Aditya L1? Two years. As so far, two years. But okay. I expect many of these instruments will be working much beyond. Thank you, sir. I have to get back again. So I hope you have learned enough of the sun. OK, you. Sir, what will be the time period for Aditya L1 to reach L1 point? So when did we send? It was, it, it's going to be at L1 exactly, I mean, it is already close to the L1. So, uh, so about little more than, uh, about four months, I would say, to reach to the L1. So first or second week, officially it will be announced, it has reached to L1. Hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about the sun. And I hope that you continue uh, understanding the physics and science more. I am pretty sure that one day he, some among you or all among you, all of you will become a very great scientist. And I look forward to seeing you somewhere in very doing good science. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your research with us today. Your insights on Aditya L1 was truly valuable and knowledgeable for the students, and definitely it will create a new perspective for them. Your contributions in the field is invaluable, and we are really grateful to you for sharing your depth of knowledge with the students. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to request our principal ma'am to hand over the momento to our guest of honor as a token of gratitude. Now I would like to request Prachi ma'am to hand over a gift as a token of memory. <laughs> this session seems to be very interesting and very knowledgeable for all the students. So with this, we wrap up the session here and more to come in the future, we are hoping for that. Thank you so much, sir.